Uh, g'day, Bears fans. We're going back to the 90s in a really big way today. A couple of the absolute legends that I had the pleasure to, to captain and lead and work with over time. Paddy Jarvis and, of course, Greg Florimo on board. Paddy, so good to see you, mate. It's been so long, hasn't it? It's been so long since we've all connected and spoken. So it's dying to hear about years. first off. Yeah, mate, it's 30 years and uh, you've got prettier and I've got balder. But the, uh, what have you been doing, mate? What are you up to now in particular? We'd love to know that. Uh, I have a uh, transport business and uh, I moved, I moved uh, Flo, Flo's uh, old man, actually. Moved him up to, uh, what's that place? Uh, you moved him up the coast. You actually McLean, moved me. McLean, wasn't it? McLean or somewhere? And I remember, mate, it, what, you didn't just move me. It was the quickest removal and strip of the house I've ever seen. You ran from the truck back to the house and he'd come back out and he'd have a fridge on his back, carry it on his set by himself onto the truck. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a circus, actually. It's, it's like a big show. There's, <laughs> there's no shock in that. What have you been doing the whole time? Same thing, same thing, Patty. Still doing it, Sniffer. Still, still doing that. We got um, oh, you know, I kind of like the the um, activity. And I like the customers. I got a good clientele, and and you know, like when when you uh, sit back at the end of the day, you, you work hard, and then uh, you feel the, the rewards are are there financially, both and 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 just in life. You know what I mean? Like you, hard work. You know, it's part of the way we grew up. You know what I mean? So, Red, doesn't that sum him up? Doesn't that sum him up? I'm not shocked at all. The two stories you said, the fact that you said he picks the fridge up and runs in there is a fact. And look at how happy Patty is. He yeah. showed up oh. every day like that, didn't he, Flo? He always showed up happy to work and happy to have people having a great time. Fair comment? Fair comment. Great leader. Hands like, you know, bag of marbles. Tough as nails. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, how did oh, you play so many games with your hands? Well, Talk us through how you got through rugby league, a rugby league career as big as they were, yeah. and you couldn't catch it, though. But they don't work. <laughs> they don't uh, work. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, 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 when you got blokes um, like Mario Fennick, <laughs> and it's, it comes it comes in handy, like when you had to put the dukes up, you know what I mean? What does mother say? Put the dukes up? <laughs> mother? That's it, that's it, that's it. Best fans, Paddy Jarvis, Jarvis and Mario Fennick. Oh, you think Paddy Jarvis and Mario Fennick going at each other nonstop. Two absolute extremes. What about Two Mario? Mario bloody gouging me with the scrubs <laughs> when he was playing for South Sydney and then he denies it. <laughs> I did it! I did it! I did it! No way, buddy! <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he told he told me he did. He admitted he did to me, uh, Patty. And he said, "Because I said, well, what's your relationship with Patty?" He said, "I'm scared of Patty." He said, I'm scared of Patty. <laughs> I said, "Why is that?" He said, "I accidentally my finger went in his eyes, and I went down two knuckles in in the middle of the scrum." And I looked up and Paddy, Paddy just looked at me and went, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so I took it, he said, I took it out slowly and I've respected him ever since. I've scared of him ever since. <laughs> so your memory's a bit different. He, he did admit it to us, Paddy. Oh, Paddy, yeah. you come to Norse, you talk about Mario. Flo, you'd agree with this. We had three senior boys coming in the early 90s. There was the great Peter Jackson. Oh. We had Mario and we had Paddy Sarvis come to the group. You know, um, what, what did you find when you got here? What did you find, Pat? What did you see when you walked into the place? Oh, the the enthusiasm. There was a there was a, um, I came from uh, the Roosters, right, with Arthur Beach and Russell Fairfax, and and the environment wasn't um, that healthy. You know, I mean, I used to get out to training early and and be out there doing warm ups and stuff, and everyone, well, not everyone. A lot of the other blokes would be sitting in the sheds waiting for for time to clock on. You know what I mean? And then I then I came down to North Sydney, and there was David Fairley, Billy Moore, Gary Larsons, and they're keen. And it was so keen. It was such a great change of environment that I loved the place, and I and I still love it. You know what I mean? I've still got great memories. And uh, anyway, it's funny. 
that was it was just the enthusiasm around that place. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I was thinking about our chat today, and I asked Flo for a minute what his memories of Paddy were. So I've got a I've got one that stands out in my mind. But you mentioned something I was going to ask you. I just don't think they appreciate what they had when Paddy Jarvis arrived. It was Morley, fairly more more and Larson. You know, they were lucky to have you. It sounds like you were lucky to have them, right? Because you were, you know, you yeah. needed that enthusiasm in there. What's your memory memory of those three? Well, of their work ethic, their behaviours. Well, their their enthusiasm was just infectious. You know what I mean? You, you loved it, and um, and they they could play football. And super keen. It was. I remember Gary Larson. Gary Larson got picked in the in the Queensland team. And and I was like, good on you, Gary, that's freaking great. That's great, you know? And like, and then uh, he said, I'm a bit worried about Paddy. I said, what are you worried about? He said, I'm just worried about what, what how it's gonna go. I said, do you think you can get through six tackles? He said, yeah, I could do that. I said, just get through six and then do another six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Priceless, priceless. He said, he said, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and the, oh, guy, the guy went into origin. He was fantastic for a Queensland. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, Billy, yeah. Billy was the same. And and, and uh, Fairley, David Fairley, man, he, he did the same for New South Wales. And, and uh, you know, yeah, they were great, great days, you know. Yeah, you, you got us. You got us back living in it, Paddy. You're fantastic with that group for a number of reasons. Flo, your memories of Paddy when he arrived? Um, well, he came with a reputation, and you know he was a hard man, and um, he was a leader, and um, he was you know a man of great principle and a professional, and we all respected that, and we just got on board with him, and. It was he was one of those guys that if we're in the room and we were talking about the game, if he spoke, you know, everyone went silent. It was he had that he had that presence. He has that presence. So um, for me, I was didn't only, know that. <laughs> well, you did. You did. I mean, you know, especially for me as a young fella, seeing you, you know, playing for Saints and just doing all those great things, and um, and then coming and adding to what we already had. Um, you know, it was it was awesome. And then I do remember you took over the strength and conditioning or, or the strength component of our training there. Um, and Tony, I might be jumping the gun here. You might have this this question, but I'd be interested to find out um, Paddy's um, view on um, Danny Williams and Josh Stewart, um, who oh. do uh, <laughs> tell the story of. Uh, <laughs> We had the dressing room, the visitors' dressing room set up. So Paddy had come in every morning for weights, and he'd undo a little shed uh, section we had our weights locked away in, and he'd pull all the weights out, and we'd do weights in the morning before work. I think we we're all still working in those, at those times, and then Paddy would pack them all back in, and we'd all have a shower and go off to work. Do you want to pick it up from there, Paddy? Do you remember the story? Uh no, you, you finish the story. Okay. I'm, I'm not right. sure which one well, you're talking about. The story goes that we don't, <laughs> you were packing the weights in. Which one? Um, and um, you were in that little room and Josh and Danny decided to lock you in. Oh. The room. And they were the last there. So they took their time having a shower. I think it maybe even the Mister was there at the time. So it was about an hour or so. They could hear you banging on the door from um, next door's dressing room. Um, and about an hour later, they came and like, got you out and just ran for their lives as they <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, well um, Danny Williams didn't go too far, did he? <laughs> <laughs> he had to go to Melbourne to get away from me. Paddy, <laughs> oh, yeah. if you also, while well, Flo's throwing up, going to work and you were this SNC guy, do you remember a certain uh, redhead centre arriving in a taxi on his way home from a night out and doing his weight sessions early in the morning. Do you remember that one? Yeah, well, what was his name? Red. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the legendary ones as well when he outlifted. I think Fennick and Gavin Jones were in. They went there and Flo went in and out, squatted them all on his way home from a night out, which undubbed your talent, Red. Is there a bit of truth in that, Red? 
But I, I remember, I don't remember the weight sessions, but I remember the swimming sessions at North Sydney Pool at seven o'clock and getting the cab past home to pick up my, my boardies you know, straight to the pool. And my wife just shut uh. it up. Just grab the towel. That, was, that was your talent, Red. That was your talent. Oh, you I wasn't on my your eyes shut. Still, still, oh, still in the thing. My memory, if I could throw in a Paddy Jarvis memory, a serious one. I remember when you said he's a hard man, I remember a couple of things. One, he was literally hard. I remember like packing in, the, even training all that, just to touch the bloke was hard. Harder than all the other blokes there. He was just made of gristle and, and toughness. And, and when I joke about the hands there at the start, every session, Paddy would get up there and would warm his hands up, get up with a ball, do a couple of laps. And of course, this built the fibre in North Sydney, these sorts of things. We saw, you know, you, you get up and you prepare, right? But Paddy taught us that. We physically watched him do that. So he doesn't need to give the wise advice to, to you know, your, your fairly Moors and Larsons. He actually did the things and then people followed it. And other blokes would go up and kick, other blokes would warm up for things because you saw... You had to get that up there early and get warmed up. And we all, you know, you hear all those great stories, you know, all the great champions get there before training and get ready, the Michael Jordans. Well, Paddy Jarvis took that to North Sydney, took it to another level. I'll give you another one I remember was we were doing, uh, it was early days. I want to ask you what went through your head, Paddy, if you can remember it. But we were doing a really hard session. It must have been like one of the days of, you know, 15, 200s in the 10, 100 metre sprints, you know, on the clock, away we go. And I remember on the line and someone broke. We we're about six or seven into this tough session, and Paddy was just still knees down on the staff position, puts his hand up, and he yelled out to the trainer, I think it was Mark Cannon at the time, and he said, No, they broke, start it, can't have cheat, start it again, do it again. And everyone thought, Oh, fair enough, good call, go back and start the race again. Paddy said, No, no, start the whole session again, everybody, back to the first one, start, we go again. We can't have cheats in the middle of it, we may as well be here. Paddy, why did you do, what was going through your heads when you're in pain, older and slower than the rest of us? I wasn't slower than you, you, you Buzz. <laughs> you know, why, again, why? again I, I just come from um, from the Roosters, right? And, and Arthur Beeson was our coach. And Arthur was the nicest bloke in the whole world, but he lacked some discipline. And the guys, they'd have cones out. And everybody would cut past it, would, would, wouldn't go around the cones. And I, and I got there and I thought, it's just basics, little simple basics of, of doing, making a, doing a bit extra instead of doing a bit less, you know what I mean? That uh, makes someone great. Yeah, well, it had a real effect, didn't it, Flo? I think you, those memories are genuine and they were there and they, you know, and, 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 and you know, as the captain of that group, I remember, you know, I used to think about this at night, you know, I had, as I said, Fennec come in, Jarvis come in, Jackson come in, Flo was our spiritual leader and, and you know, and led in so many other ways. And my job was just to get out of your way. I couldn't thank you enough, you know, just to keep everything marshaled around. And you know that Jacko sort of steered the footy side, Flo lifted us, Paddy, you did those things. And Mario was just that character, wasn't he? Yeah, it was just the yeah. character that sort of had the intensity and seriousness, but also that fun, which a lot yeah. of people saw afterwards after, didn't they? Yeah, that laughter at training is important. You got to, you can have the seriousness and, and the discipline, but you still need the laughter. And, uh, and, and, and every, every, like you said, Sniffer, everybody comes with a different, um, a different value, you know what I mean? And like, it was so it was so good playing with uh, Peter Jackson too. I, I found him incredible on the field, and uh, I remember we played a game against Canberra down there in Canberra, and and he just he just tore them apart, you know, single handedly. You know what I mean? And uh, he was as good as he got, wasn't he? He was as yeah, good as he got, Jack. He, he was great, well. And, and flow outside him and, or inside him, it was like we had we had a great backline. You know what I mean? And and yeah. and uh, no, nah, they were good. They were good times. John, Johnny MacArthur in the centres there. I often thought Spotty MacArthur was always a little bit understated as a bear. I think all of us would appreciate him. And you know, Flo, it'd be fair to say that he was. Absolutely, one of the greats. If you were to talk about North Sydney over time, would you put him up there? 
Um, oh, my word. I mean, versatility, how many positions did he play? He would have played halfback, 5'8", centre winger, fullback, uh, uh, hooker. So he played most positions. Goal kicker, like that dainty little left foot dab that he had. Um, yeah, I mean, there was such a strong senior group, wasn't it, through that period as well? Like you say, you just had to guide the ship sniffer there. There were so many strong, strong characters, strong people. Um, but I wouldn't underwrite, you know, the, your influence at the club and your combination with Steve Martin and, and, and taking us from, you know, also rans to, to success. I mean, I didn't realise you were there for seven seasons at the club, which, um, which surprised me. But, I mean, 91 was your best season, would you say, there, or 94 potentially? Yeah. Or? 91. 91 yeah. was definitely the one. And it was, you know, unfortunately, it broke my leg at the start of 92. So it sort of tailed out a bit. I never really recovered from that one, really. But 91 was, you know, 91 for me was the combination of, we mentioned the three big ones, you know, coming into the club. So we had that senior group of blokes that stayed the distance. I remember taking over as captain, you know, and sort of saying, you've got to be part of the, you know, if you're not part of the solution, you've got to be part of the problem. And that's why I look at MacArthur and yourself and being, you blokes stayed there real steady. And then, in come the, the three big boys that had, and Hawley, those guys were the steady ones there, but the particular blokes that I noticed. But then you had the new ones coming through. You mentioned mm. the, the, the Moors and the Fairleys coming in and the Jason Martin, Mark Soden, you know, terrific guys, terrific players. And they just was great foil to each other, wasn't it? Matty Sears coming through. Mm. And you just saw the combination of the youth and the experiences where, for me, 91 was the one and we... You know, we, we probably just didn't quite have that experience in the semis. We weren't quite ready for the semis, but, you know, you know, by crikey, we went close, you know. Still mm. still think about how we could have got that one done. Don't you blokes think that? in Particularly mm. the Penrith game, the two weeks out. Mm. Do you think, Flo? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I don't, I think there was maybe 97, we had a, a possibly a better opportunity. But, um, yeah, it's, hard. it's, you know, you just, got to let it go and think about what could have been in in just a flash and just let that go and it, it's hard. Yeah. it's hard but another interesting thing I'd, I'd ask you sniffer is about the queenslanders that came to the club and, and all of a sudden there was this massive influx over the late well, the late 80s and into the 90s and how did that happen was was that something that like did was it the bob saunders there did he knock on your door or was that a club strategy well or? my Main one for me, well, I, I followed, yeah, definitely. I followed Les Kiss. Les Kiss was from Bundaberg. I saw him go. Uh, I definitely had the offer. Uh, I remember that Frank Stanton, Bob Saunders, and uh, the great Monty Hodges, the board member, came up to, who was also a great influence, I thought, quietly around the club because he really stood up for what the club was about, juniors, what you knew about, you know, which those guys taught us a little bit about the, the soul behind North Sydney. You know, it wasn't just the club. There was that whole local community. I love Monty for his conversations around that. But they came up and I must admit, when I looked at it, uh, I looked at, you know, you had the French brothers, you yep. had Marty Bella there. You had, you had a lot of Queenslanders down yep. already. Kerry Bostead was a Queenslander, yeah. was in the place as well. And then Kissy was there. So there was an attraction uh, naturally. Yeah. Gavin yeah. Jones. You Gavin. Know, so when I looked at it, I went, you know, and those are big names to us, you know, more than more than I probably would say to Paddy Jarvis is from the NRL competition. It was the Queensland blokes when I was growing up that we looked up to, I looked up to, you know, so uh, so we, we when I, that's why I followed them down there, you know, and mm. you know, Gary Larson was there at all. But um it was an easy decision, I think, with the Queenslanders there rather than, you know, we had the conversations around some other clubs. Yeah. Yeah. So on, on the field, Flo, what's your great memories of playing for the Bears? I'll come to you in a minute, Pat. What, what sort of, when you think about on the field, we speak a lot about off the field. What would be the games that you most remember, you most think of? Always home games. Always think about home games. Rarely do I remember or, or really highlight any away games, it's always the capacity crowd. Sunday afternoon, the band, um, you know, going into a game confident and 20 minutes into the game, we virtually put them to bed. And we had a, I think in 91, we had a massive role, didn't we? With, with was it seven right. games in a row? I can't recall, but um, just that feeling and, and, and knowing um, it, that the fans are there you're going to entertain. We're ready to go. Um, but, any, you know, 
a particular game for me was 94 at North Sydney Oval um, against Canberra, where <clears throat> I think um, we won and I think I played myself into the kangaroo squad um, uh, that day in front of some good judges wow. against... Wow. Uh, um, anyway, mate. I'd nail it down oh, that day. Yeah. Yeah. I'll come back to you on that kangaroo too, if you don't mind, in a sec, for, uh, Flo. Uh, what about you, Paddy? Memories of the Bears' time on the field? Any game or any memory? I used to love playing North in the Oval. It was my favourite oval in all of Sydney to play at. The, the, the atmosphere was, was amazing. And in that 91 season, we broke the ground record, I think, three times. And... And it was it was just incredible. And what about after the game, Tony? When we come out of the dressing rooms, and and they'd all be over at the pub, Percy's, and they'd start cheering and chanting. They'd be yeah. back out on the footpath. <laughs> it was just electric. It was like, oh man, this is so good, you know. It was um, it was, it was, it was so great, good, wasn't it? Happy environment for everybody that they were so that was they were just um, repaying us with for the the wins that we brought to the club. That was the people were just so happy. I'm so glad to hear that you appreciate it because Flo and I we we'd sort of come from those couple of years before where we didn't see that. Whereas the opposite, you know, and that's what was great about lifting in 91. I forgot that we broke the record three times. That's a great memory too, Pat, to think of that. that and it was that feeling, wasn't it? You know, I remember the, the fact that the fans did lift it, really lifted us, didn't they? And Mario, we used to show over Mario taking the walk past the pub where they'd sing his name and do all those things. And they, they were just fantastic little, little era, wasn't it? I think... Um, yeah, I think 91 was, uh, you know, having won those reserve grade titles was a time it felt like the first grade was going to inch their way up towards it. You know, and we were in that playoff, beat Manly at the football stadium in the semi. And for me personally on the field, it was always the Manly games. I like, I look back on it and yeah. I do sense and feel flow those home grounds, those home sellouts. But the home sellouts on a, I remember particularly Friday night when they let the fans out to the side of the field and we were playing Manly. And, and you just thought, you know what, we're building something here. We've yeah. got something going on and this isn't normal. This is special, you know, and we touched the dark days and you, and as a group, you know, proudly we were leading the club in the good days, in the great days. So they were great feelings, weren't they? Yeah, enormous. And, yeah. and actually appreciated by us, you'd say to the fans, wouldn't you? Yeah, it wasn't lost on us. We, we felt it flow, didn't we? I felt off the field as well. We were, we were, we were at a level where we needed to be. I thought our, you know, sports science and our training and our, um, and our coaching um, was was you know where it needed to be, and 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 as well put that alongside the staff and the players that we had there. It felt like yeah, you know, it was it was aligning without a doubt. It was true, wasn't it, mate? We were sending blokes off to Origin in big numbers. I thought that had a big impact on us as a club. You know, we were having blokes going off and playing in those big matches, and then we'd see you Flo, go on the the kangaroo tour in '94. You know. And they probably never said it to you, but couldn't be prouder. You know, I remember watching you, how great a tour you had. Like, you know, what a tour. I didn't even see that coming. You know, not only did you play your way in against Canberra, but you had such a wonderful tour over there. Who was your roomie? Uh, my roomie was Daisy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, 11 weeks. So, so Daisy. that would have been quiet. <laughs> it, was it was fun. It was definitely fun. Lots of chocolate. Yeah. Lots of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Paddy, your, your games for in origin in Australia, any flashbacks you can share with us? Drifting away from the Bears for a minute. Um, some of the memories of, of uh, origin were, were, were the, um, the camps with, when I, I managed to, to score some really good fellas to, to room with. I got Desi Hasler, Blocker Roach, um, Noel Cleal, and... Uh, you know, those guys are just fantastic. You get to know them, you know, get, get, become, and you just become instant friends, you know, the, the, the connections, you know, they're, they're really good. It's a really good uh, memories, you know what I mean, of origin, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's funny, mate. I never, I never, interesting you say that, but I used to say it, a lot of people still say it, you know. 
the influence Origin had on the Bears in that period was significant for what you said. If you think about it, you know, it's the 34 best players in the comp go away for six weeks because you've got two weeks training, haven't you? And, you're, yeah. you know, you're hanging out, you're training, your intensity comes up. I remember, so you're away, but I remember you used to sort of say to the boys, you know, we've got, to, we've got to crank it up a bit here when they come back because these boys are going to be really up and flying. It used to boost us in. I think it had a real impact in what we do in the back end of the season. Do you used to find that at all, Flo, with the, with the, with the level of intensity the Origin boys came back with? There was a real... Billy used to... Billy Moore used to sort of exemplify more than anything. It sort of... He'd be another foot higher, oh, wouldn't he? And full of energy. Queensland <laughs> got up. He was, he was, his chest was out and he was on his tip. Well, of that, was usual. <laughs> that was usually. That was usually. Or if they didn't, but um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, and that's the idea. You know, they bring back those habits um, and everyone wants to learn. That's everyone's continually developing and origins of pinnacle. And, and what have these guys picked up? What are they learning? What are they doing? And, so it's a matter of feeding of, of what they're bringing back and they brought back plenty. What about the Bears now, Paddy? What do you think? What could happen to us? Do you have any drift off on any thoughts while you're, you're shifting your furniture around and what we could do in the future? I'm not sure what's going to occur in, in, the, in the reality of the situation as far as them making it back into the, into the big time. But it would be... Lovely to see. I don't know whether it's unrealistic or whatever. Flo would have, uh, have a much better understanding of where things are at there. But what would you think if it wasn't as it was, Patty? What if it wasn't just as it exists now, but there was some form of red and black and bear out there somewhere inside of a, you know, let's say expansion or a different club? How would you feel? Oh, that that would be enormous. But, um, it's. I think it's better to... Would, it's a better solution than to form new clubs and bring new cl a new club into the into the um, lineup. It, it'd be better to to revitalise an old club. You know what I mean? It's like cyclical, though, right? So, if, like Flo, you've done a fantastic job with a number of people there, keep them where we're at. But they in some guys, we'll get back. We showed that I think in that era from coming. What we've spoken about for half of the days now, like it's. You get your eyes up and you look for opportunities, you'll find one if there's a real genuine will there. And the Bears is too strong a brand. It's too strong a brand to not get to where it want to be. It's the only strong brand that's really sitting outside of where it should be. So I really believe that I feel like there's a bit of a sense of urgency at the moment where the, you know, in some guys we can get the thing back to it. By the way, I think the club's doing a terrific job now with, with the, the setup flow. It's fair to say I've seen some of your videos on where the gym's doing and your recruitment excitement, the, the the women's game stuff superb. So, you know, doing so many strong things to put us in a good position to get back. I think Oregon All Bears fans should keep their eyes up. We'll, we'll be back there at some point. There'll be, there'll be some strip of some gleam of us in there somewhere at some point in the future because we're, it's worth fighting for. You know, it's worth fighting for. And as you say, Paddy, you can make some administrators make some bad decisions. You can always make some good ones to turn it around. So at some point it will happen. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean the markers of us for the moment. We can just keep keeping the standards up and getting there, I think. So have you got any uh, any insights, any thoughts as to where it's going? <laughs> no, that's good talk, Sniffer, though, and, and same with you, PJ. It's, um, it is a strong brand and it's, it's disappointing. It's a shame that we are where we are right now in terms of the NRL. However, as you say, the business is, is really strong in its current environment. We intend to be the best that we can be in that environment, um, but we always will keep our eyes up. And opportunity knocks at the moment with the expansion, 17 teams, everyone's talking about 18 teams. So, um, you know, for me, as, as Paddy has helped me over the years and Sniffer, you have from a long way away, it's, it's been a tough, tough grind over the last 20 years. So my eyes are always up, but at the moment, they're just focused on, on getting this footy club the best it can be. We can have our day soon. We keep our eyes up and keep it together and flow you, keep powering away with the, with the squad the way it looks fantastic. I love all the feedback and all the social media out of the Bears from up here in London. It's just a joy to see that 
yes, we're not in the in the NRL, but we're setting some great standards down there. And I just think if we keep this up and get the right leaders, we can come back at some stage. But I'll wrap up and say, Paddy, that's been absolutely fantastic to see you again, mate. It's it's uh, I think everybody would say it's a pleasure to listen and learn off you. And, and, and Red, thanks again for everything you're doing and for being a great leader you are. And you should be really proud of everything you've done. We're really pleased. Great to see everybody again. Thank you. Thanks, Nipper. Thanks, PJ. Thanks, guys. This is good. Nothing better than seeing you guys. Very fond memories. Always will always be be friends forever, I reckon. <laughs>